I'm just going to let this video play for a bit, the short sequences, and please have a look at this. Hello and welcome everybody. Welcome to beautiful pair rowing, women's pair rowing. It's the Krakic sisters from Croatia. When I first looked at the footage, I thought, what do you want me to correct here? This is good stuff. But then I had a closer look. And as always, if you have a second look, you see where something can be improved. Please have a look at the catch. Just before catching, is it just me or is there a slight pause before we see that the body motion that is performed actually has its effect in boat motion. Is it possible that there is a slight lag? Have a look. Duck at the catch. Duck at the catch. Let's just check the bow girl. There is a, in just, that's just my 50 cents. Just before, fuck now, the body is ready. At this point of time, you can already start to drive. Why is it not happening? And this is something that struck me and said, it looks so good. The first thing I always look at is the catch. How many, how many actions do you have to perform at the catch before you can actually start an effective drive? And it takes too long to connect. The question is, why? Why is that? Why is that with a pair that looks so well in sync? What is the challenge here? And I think, the usual problem, the usual suspect, it is, first of all, the preparation of the hips. At stroke rate 30 plus, which this certainly is, it is crucial to do the first things first. Now, the first thing you want to do is get the hip in position, because it's very difficult to get the hip in position later on. Why the hip? Because the hip is the main force transfer element. And check my cursor, you see this? Hip straight hip backward. The lower, the lower spine needs to be pointing forward. If we, not, if we don't talk about the hip, we talk about the lower part of the spine, so the lower back. Um, most people actually mistake the upper section of the trunk with the lower section of the trunk. When I say pivot forward, some people just pivot forward like this. That's not what I mean. It's the hip. It's the lower part of your trunk that is effective. And at this part, of the recovery where your legs are bent, you're close to half slide, quarter to half slide. This is where the where the lower part of your back should be should be facing forward. It's not. Now the chances that it will face forward just before the catch are close to zero. There's not enough time. And the only time actually where you can do this, prepare the lower spine to, to the lower back to um, point forward is with the hands away. Maybe after hands away but with the hands away. And Legs should still be straight because this helps you to create the tension in the glutes. You need to get that oh, body rocking forward. Okay. Now, at the catch, the stroke girl has an awesome relaxed shoulder. This is so good to see. Wow. Because this really means that with the upper section of her trunk, she's able to have all the flexibility she needs in the outside shoulder to adapt to that semicircular motion. This is very good. But the lower section of the trunk isn't playing in. Why? You see that seat is just too close to the feet. There's not enough distance. That, that space is too narrow. Why? Because the physiology doesn't allow it. Um, if that seat goes all the way in, it's like doing a deep squat where that lower section of the spine is already you know, bending inwards again, which means your spine is not straight. And it should be at least in the lower sections. I'm a big fan of having a relaxed and hunched upper body, but the lower sections where all the music plays in terms of force transfer, right there, this is not the case. So I think, and this leads to the problem that we see right now at the catch, and now it's a big pity I can't go frame by frame. You see that it takes until now, which is three quarter already, so from full to three quarter, they, they need the time to connect the blade in the water. And now starts the effective phase. So if they were effective, they could actually allow themselves to roll three-quarter slide only and forget everything from three-quarter to full slide. Or to be more efficient, position 
the seat a bit more backward, make sure the lower spine points forward right after hands away, with the hands away, and then keep the rest of the upper body work, which is actually excellent. So now is starts the effective drive phase. And this is very good. And they compensate so well. They compensate so well for that, in my personal opinion, mistake um, of preparation with body tension. This is about the best body tension I've ever seen in a pair. I mean, these two girls are so oh, very good, you know, in the upper chest bone. There's a lot of body control. So these two are actually able to control their bodies and therefore they are perfectly able to control that boat. Although I think they didn't prepare well. What they do, I think they try to rush out the finish position too quickly. Whoop, whoop. What looks very good is that they do it in sync. And in a team boat, you can do whatever you want as long as you can do it in sync. However, the pair is not a true team boat, in my humble opinion. Team boat to me is defined by how many blades are in the water. It's just two blades, so it's basically a single you just spread it out with two people and long oars, but it's basically a single. And therefore, um, you have to move very, very effectively. And effectively means weight with the legs, let the hip come forward, and use that pivot momentum. You see that the bow girl has to pivot very far back. Good thing though, her oar bends even now. So I think, physiologically speaking, um, the Krakic sisters are must be incredibly well trained. I've never met them in person. Um, all I got was their video, but so physiologically speaking, this is phenomenal. But it could be used more effectively. Let's just play it for a while. Have a look at this leg, every catch. It just takes time. It takes time. The boat doesn't stop floating. That's a good thing because they have a lot of feeling. And the stroke girl, you see, you see how relaxed she picks up that stroke with the shoulder. I said. And what we see, um, the, the relaxed shoulder motion is necessary because the hip is not in a good position. If the hip were in a good position, um, I would, this, this thing would be a rocket, absolutely. And what they do very nice is they pivot very well together. Wow, that's absolutely good. <laughs> That's beautiful to see. Look at this. Jump, jump, opening. Ah. Ah. That's really good. Now, let's go back to steady state. Do we see some of that in steady state? Yeah, we do. We do, absolutely. Um, for example, the stroke woman. See the legs come early, come very early right now and the stroke wound falls onto her oars right at the catch. And this is something we see already in race pace. We also see in race pace. There is not as much left because there is not as much time to oh, put body weight on the oar handle at the catch. But we see there is something left of that. And the bow woman, you see her inside shoulder is very cramped. It's too high. It's too high. She's trying to have both arms straight. So I think I have the impression at least her prime focus was to use both arms straight because this is how you can use your body mass more effectively but the downside is that she didn't have quite that shoulder flexibility on the inside yet and she still tried to keep it straight so I think the first first thing that ought to be done in my opinion is relax the inside shoulder and then try to be so straight so have that shoulders section somewhat parallel to your Inboard hand. Yeah, and with the bow woman, it's it's about the same. You see that the upper body comes forward the entire drive and recovery time. So there's a lot of body motion, which is not necessary. But they try to convert that body motion into hang, into hang and drive motion which takes about one quarter of a full stroke. So the effective stroke starts at three quarters line. I hope this makes sense for you guys, what I'm saying here. And I hope I'm able to express what, what I see. It looks very intriguing 
until you look at details. And one of the details I'm looking at is the blade depth. How deep does the blade go? Too deep. Too deep. They are not using random foils, but it's it's pretty deep. And check the check the bow right there and check the bodies. Now catch. And this is where the boat should move and it, it's not moving. Let's check it check this out once more, okay? Check the bow. What it's like you wanna breathe but you can't. It's like move and it doesn't move because there is a lot of up down connecting Ooh, finally and this is done a three-quarter slide so the connection at the catch takes so long because the preparation is not right look at that finished position of the stroke woman I and mean, if you had to draw a picture and tell the, the entire world if you want to have a good finish position this is what it's supposed to look like this is excellent now the bow, the bow woman leans the bow woman sorry the bow woman leans back a lot, a lot. Is it necessary? No, I don't think so. Because if you pivot forward and bring actually the hip forward, then um, you have enough motion capacity. The problem is that many athletes work too much with the upper section of the trunk, also perception wise, and forget that the only part of the hip that is effective is the lower section but if I never move the lower section forward I have to move the upper section of the trunk endlessly backward and this is what we see with the bow woman Ooh, whop. Yeah. so although this looks absolutely intriguing and very good there are things which are not as efficient as they could be good but for the rest I mean, <laughs> you, you you girls do an excellent job it's just beautiful to see that such a nice rhythm such a nice excellent well synced rhythm and you really have you must have an excellent feeling of how to move a boat okay everybody that's it if you would like to send me footage um, just make sure you are subscribed to me on YouTube or Instagram and or you're part of that Facebook arm training group and I'm looking forward to get that. Just make sure I do have full usage rights. So I'm allowed to talk about it on YouTube uh, or on Instagram or any, on a, any other public media. Yeah, for the rest, I wish you a very good day. I'm looking forward to see you soon. Bye-bye.